Well, welcome back um, for a final keynote. And as I said in the last session, from a prototype um, an experimental process in Melbourne, we now turn to a major experiment in Denmark and we'll move straight into a live panel discussion after Nord Copenhagen's presentation. But please, importantly, post questions and we'll take these with us into the last panel discussion of the symposium. And it's great to be welcoming back Nord Architects. Um, we've heard from Nord Architects before about this important projects. It's great to have them back talking about progress. The talk will explore the recently launched house and laboratory, um, which is a hugely optimistic project that promotes experiments and new ways of living. Now, we all know Denmark is well renowned for its humanistic approach towards architecture, and it's well understood democratic approach has been key to innovation in urban developments in great urban and public realm spaces and landscape design that has enhanced everyday lives for Danish families and arguably created an aesthetic surplus practical living and socially sustainable communities. However, like many cities that we've heard about over the last few days, this approach has been challenged in recent years by growth and a rapid building pace. The question is how the building industry and architects can ensure a resurgence of new housing typologies, communities and vibrant urban spaces that we interpret housing concepts reflecting the present and future societal needs. And we heard a lot of, the, a lot of that in the last session. There is a growing public focus on new demographics, um, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that. Diverse family patterns and the US sustainability development goals that calls for new definitions and new standards of mainstream housing. The Housing Laboratory Initiative is a key example of how to inspire and finance new experiments in housing typologies, the circular economy, vibrant neighbourhood development and ways to explore ideas that encourage higher living standards in housing more generally. And so the lab is overseen and curated by Nord Architects. And this afternoon, we're joined by Johannes Molander Pedersen to hear more about the progress that's been made with seven prototype projects. Now, Johannes Molander Pedersen founded Nord Architects with Morten Rask Gregerson in 2002 in Copenhagen. Since then, Nord Architects has received wide acclaim for the portfolio of work as practicing architects, as urbanists, as academics, exhibitors, lecturers, and public debate. Their work investigates how architecture can act, importantly as a platform for new alliances between the public, the private, and the civic sectors, creating important societal challenges and expanding the scope of the public realm. Nord Architects has taken on projects with culture, health, education, and creative typologies, as well as major urban spaces and development schemes. Their work includes the award-winning healthcare centre for cancer patients, and kids, city daycare in Copenhagen, and master plans for a major healthcare centre um, and hospital in Denmark. Johannes Molander Pedersen was the Australian Institute of Architects Foundation Droga Architect in Residence. And from a personal point of view, Johannes and I both met, interestingly, at a symposium in Berlin way back in 2012. We've maintained a close dialogue ever since. In fact, Joe left Australia following the the Droga residency, clutching a copy of Boyd's Australian Ugliness. And I know that um, that visit to Australia had a huge positive impact on both Morton and Johannes. And it's a delight to welcome you back, Johannes. Wow, thank you for that introduction, Alan. Um, appreciate it a lot. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, housing assembly. Uh, I will uh, share my screen and uh, dive directly into uh, what I have prepared today. Um, so uh, hopefully you are able to see this slide. Um, so as Alan said, uh, I'm a founding partner in Nord Architects. Uh, we are based in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. Uh, we are working uh, internationally uh, at the moment, primarily in, in Europe. Um, with the different uh, types of projects uh, within uh, different sectors, but primarily the the the, the public and and uh, sector within institutions, but also uh, private housing projects. Uh, but what we also do is that we are client consultants, uh, working on a more strategical levels and and early phases. Uh, we are that 
working for the government uh, in Denmark and on, on all their major projects in early phases. Um, and um, yeah, and so on. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the, the housing lab today, but uh, since it's a project that is uh, uh, running and in in process i will uh, also focus on uh, the broader context which this pro uh, project uh, uh, works in and the broader D danish housing market how it works and and what's going on here so i, I hopefully uh, hope that that would be relevant for for everyone as well so uh, very short denmark really really small country in northern europe of course um uh you can almost state that we are uh, one uh, ur urban entity um uh, with a little and small population uh approximately six million people um of course capital city copenhagen a uh, very low uh, scale uh low dense uh, uh, city uh for 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 many years um we have a small but uh, open economy uh, in Denmark. Um, we <laughs> we are often indexed as one of the happiest uh, uh, countries in the world uh, since uh, UN World Happiness Report started. Um, and you can always discuss the <laughs> re reports like that and, and the reason why. But one of the reasons is, of course, uh, the access to, to free healthcare education and also good living conditions uh which means uh, uh that that we also have a relatively high life ex expectancy um and of course we have a uh a, a governance uh, system of, of of democracy uh why is this important uh, and why uh, why it's relevant for for the, for talking about housing it is because uh, housing uh, policy and housing is a very close link to life quality it's also a political uh, uh, thing uh, and a political tool. Um, for example, uh, the, the most increased uh, uh, value um, investment for many years is uh, private property. And it's uh, sort of a, a hot political potato whether that should be taxated or not in, in Denmark. But it's also a political uh, mean to to, uh, to to gain the political agenda that the, the current uh, government uh, are working for, um, the Danish society and and ways of organizing ourselves sort of very much derives from the, the co-ops uh, uh, early on uh, in, in an industrial uh, age, and that also inflected how our housing market uh, basically are organized. Um, obviously, we have. Uh, now what's called a welfare society where with a very strong public uh, sector um but it's also uh, under pressure uh, you can say um uh, because uh, of the globalization uh, the climate crisis and so on uh, we spend a lot of uh, our uh, revenue uh, and, and uh, brute uh, budget in, in Denmark on, on health, education and social uh, sector, which also um, are, are closely linked to the, to the housing uh, uh, market. Um, so the welfare uh, uh, model being under pressure um, uh, means also that, that we have to look forward in, in how to organize us and, and, and reshape the welfare society uh, in able to, to accommodate all the, the, the future uh, crisis and pressure developments. And, and a lot of indications that, that, that uh, uh, there's a huge potential to innovate uh, on how, how to do things <laughs> and how to organize things, uh, which means that, that what we see in Denmark and, and the Scandinavian in general is that, that the, 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 the triangle model of, of having a public sector uh, uh, as the strongest uh, uh, denominator is is uh, is more and more uh, uh, dissolving and 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 transforming into new alliances between the public sector private sector and the civil society and and you will see that within the housing market as as well um, uh, in general uh, Denmark is is known for uh, having a strong uh, human dimension towards uh, housing and and uh, 
uh, urban development and and uh, and uh, the government also have an official uh, architecture policy uh, this is the title for for the last one and and actually the government has just announced that they will will revise that into a new uh, national architecture policy um but but this this uh, uh focus has been sort of uh, for for the last uh, 25 years uh, has been sort of merging into it's just, it's it's not only the housing and the architecture which you you could say was a core uh, value from the from the 50s and so on but it's also now the the life between the buildings uh, and and the the coherence of of uh, the communities uh, and of course we've built on a long tradition of of, of danish architects and 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 uh, and sort of a strong tradition for for solid uh, social uh, housing programs um uh, radical new thinkers uh, in 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 various way drawing from international uh, influence uh, uh in 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 various ways but they uh, help shaping the welfare society you can say um and 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 what we see now is more that we need to transform it and that's a perhaps much difficult more difficult process um so so basically all housing uh, uh development are building on the shoulders of 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 of, of these uh, architects and these programs and these these uh, uh, uh build yeah housing uh, architects and 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 uh, what we will see now is that that the uh, for recent years, uh, we had uh, really uh, high-speed development in in, in the, the the four largest cities, university cities in Denmark, and uh, you have two different tendencies that that you have innovation within some parts of the market, but you also have a lot of just investment uh, uh, development. Uh, so, so there's recent years been built a lot of square meters, uh, very fast with the very low architectural quality, you can say, but also uh, in uh, based on on uh, yesterday's technologies, uh, yesterday's needs. Um, it's basically built over the same scheme of type of buildings, uh, um, uh, same type of apartments, same same sizes and so on. So you actually have a building mass that is it's too generic to accommodate uh, the needs uh, today. And you ha also have a building mass and a system that cannot meet the future challenges that we are standing in uh, with, with climate uh, change and so on. So. In Denmark, uh, the Danish houses market is uh, divided into that you have actually 50% is private ownership, that that be detached housing, uh, private uh, apartments and so on. Um, and then you have uh, most importantly around 21% of non-profit public housing, social housing also uh, called here in Denmark. Um, and then you have uh, private rentals and and co some co, co uh, housing. Um, so so basically, what's interesting here is the fifty percent and the twenty one percent. The twenty one percent of non profit housing is is supported by the government. Um, every year is defined uh, how much um, per square meter that you will get supported uh, for, um, and these are organized into. Um, uh, non-profit uh, housing organizations that are basically owned by the 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 renters and in inhabitants um and in this again um just to showcase uh, uh the, the the strategy that all major major cities are are, are developing towards that that uh, you you the uh, 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 increasing public transportation you're actually decreasing private uh, cars in the cities and and uh, focusing on urban spaces and and uh, uh, bicycle uh, uh, transportation in in the city um, so so this this uh, div division of housing market is is basically uh, more or less uh, equal in all the, the larger uh, uh, cities as I said um and there's by law 
and regulations in most uh, municipalities that that uh, 20 percent of new apartments and, and new uh, development buildings should be public housing uh, projects um, so showcasing copenhagen here we have a lot of development areas uh recent years uh that some are, 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 are new new build areas some are transformational areas uh harbor sites um where because of the the situation uh, it's it's very um prominent places and and you will get good quality of architecture because uh, you have a market for for it um you have uh, transformation areas that are trying to uh, meet the existing uh, uh, cultural neighborhood uh, uh, to, to uh, preserve uh, local identities. You have uh, new developing areas. Um, this is Örestad in Copenhagen, which were actually planned to finance the building of our metro system. Um, the, the first projects that were built there were, were uh, large uh, experimental housing projects. Since then, it becomes more generic, but now again, it 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 has um, it has a, a, a new approach to developing more sustainable projects because I mean time time is is demanding it. So so this new development areas is uh, uh, by um, regulation that it has to be uh, built in totally wood um uh, in in this area so so they 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 try to in the local plan in the uh, in the regulation plan to to uh, uh put specific demands in in certain enclosed areas of of high level of sustainability as this project un village which we're trying to to uh to uh, build a project based on uh, the the 17 uh, sustainability goals uh, from from UN um but anyhow this is this high quality project has been been uh, ra rather few uh, <laughs> compared to the generic housing mass and and um as for the first time here in Denmark we've been starting to build uh, high rises and uh, and that has uh, accommodated a lot of of uh, critique and and research uh, of how to build uh, high rises and how that affects livability and and the urban areas in in Denmark and and what we see now with the the, the present government uh, the social democratic government is that that there is a new awareness of of the housing market and and housing policy um and they they are really uh, using housing as a political tool uh, this is uh, the the um, uh, domestic minister uh, and minister for housing so just that that you have a minister that is both for domestic uh, issues and housing uh, in 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 one person um is is uh, quite uh, peculiar in in, in denmark um, and he works closely together with the minister of uh, culture uh Eine Helsbo Jansen, which is is uh, the the, the governmental body that are, are handling uh, you can say the architecture policy so so they uh, recently uh, uh, announced that they they would uh, support public housing uh, a, a lot more and um, they uh, formed a governmental fund uh, to, to build 22,000 social housing um, uh, with over uh, uh, one um, billion danish kroner uh, to support that that you can actually build social housing projects in expensive urban areas uh, where you normally would not uh, could afford it and it would sort of uh, make the quality decline and um, they they uh, would the fund would also support the the the, the uh, uh, that you get a better mixed balance uh, uh, social balance in cities you get more student accommodation. Uh, accommodation. Uh, they have a goal of at least 33% of public housing in major cities. Um, they want to transform uh, uh, derelict buildings like uh, hotels and 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 and, and uh, offices into to new public housing. Um, so uh, 
transformation program um, and so on um, and and they would also uh, support uh, specific projects in 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 uh, in the in the future so they also pointing at, at, at very specific places around this uh, uh, the country but uh, specifically in copenhagen where they want to to uh, to oppose this policy um so uh, again also to support affordable housing uh, they they have a specific uh, program in danish of course but it's basically to to uh, allow um, it's the, the headline said that the government is uh, supporting uh, with billions for for affordable housing to to allow nurses uh, and, and students uh, to 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 live in the city um the culture minister is saying uh, the the architect policy would will will only be for inspiration and not be uh, uh, followed up by any law. And and here you have the problem <laughs> that that you actually uh, the housing the the housing uh, policy is 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 for the quantity and for the for the for a broader social agenda. But you're actually not uh, uh, supporting the quality in in the architecture. So so this is their program. It, it uh, in Danish it means uh, closer, uh, getting closer uh, uh, cities with uh, space uh, for everyone. Um, so so what we see now is that that many municipalities is is actually. Um, rethinking their approach to to housing projects um, you will see that that different municipalities in 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 denmark has uh, a strong uh, uh, power and 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 uh, to to uh, to act uh, independently uh, also with with the different agenda so and 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 housing is a competitive mean uh, to to uh, attract new citizen uh, and so on, and new citizens, uh, apart from getting the basis of of, uh, uh, of a new house, they also actually uh, are attracted to to which values the the housing projects are uh, uh, meeting. What we see for the social housing associations is that they are getting a huge role in future transformation of the housing market and the innovation uh, capacity here so so uh, they are going to build uh, a new social housing uh, for for several billions and and uh, all over the country so they are themselves organizing and uh, creating uh, different uh, innovation projects uh, to, to test out new uh, ways of pr producing the houses, uh, to 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 uh, to test out new uh, building typologies, housing typologies, and so on. So so actually, the innova innovation capacity comes from the housing organizations because they have such a huge amount of uh, of square meters they they have to build. Um, so they are organizing uh, themselves. Uh, um, creating new alliances within themselves, but they are also taking the role as as societal developers. And what you also see is that that the the, the large pension funds uh, in in Denmark are uh, actually uh, starting to to become some of the most important housing developers. Uh, the project I showed you before, uh, where um, they demand that all houses should be in in wood is actually drived by uh, pension denmark which is a pension fund so 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 they uh, are, are investing in sustainable housing typologies but at the same time they know that their patient uh, pension customers they need new types of 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 housing uh, uh, in in the future uh, new ways of living together senior collectives and so on so they 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 see this as a, both an, an investment but also a service for their their clients so they are becoming actually uh, equal important now in the recent years uh, developing whole urban areas they are buying up uh, 
uh, larger urban areas in in the cities and developing um, uh, housing uh, schemes. You also see here an interesting development uh, within developers, uh, investors, and uh, contractors um, that actually they themselves are transforming from only uh, building projects or investing in projects to actually forming organizations, secretariats that are focusing on urban development. So and they are buying up larger areas themselves. Um, uh, they are uh, actually forming new uh, funds and new projects that that uh, has a goal to to build uh, in new ways and but also uh, build in a sustainable way. So uh, this uh, investment and, and building company NREP, um, they for example are saying that they want uh, to to uh, have a um, carbon neutral. Uh, housing portfolio in 2028, which is quite radical, uh, but they are succeeding in, in both earning money and and actually having some extreme ambitious uh, climate goals in their building portfolio. Um, they are, have also found, uh, founded a, a fund that is called 2150. Uh, with uh, in collaboration with other uh, in investors to invest in in uh, climate infrastructure and technologies. So you, certainly you see real estate investors actually taking the role um, of um, of uh, uh, developing uh, uh, very very ambitious uh, uh, both new systems and ways of doing things, but also project them themselves. Um, uh, and 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 a close link to that, uh, we we are lucky to have uh, different organizational bodies here in Denmark that are trying to um, coordinate developments like this. Uh, this is Blocks Hub. Uh, it's situated uh, together with the Danish architects company in the building you see uh, behind. But it's a it's a innovation hub for for sustainable uh, urban development um, in general. So so they are uh, hosting a lot of companies uh, sitting there and working. Uh, some of the the, the companies uh, I just showed you are sitting there, uh, and they are, are facilitating uh, knowledge sharing and, and events. Um, so obviously um, uh, this. All these developers are, are, are building from uh, recent years' experience uh, with developing projects in Denmark, uh, which some have, uh, as I told you before, um, gone well, and 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 and, and others has sort of uh, met a lot of critique because we are quite new to a larger dense and urbanized uh, uh, typologies as as high rises for example um so so uh, they have sort of earned uh, earned their uh, wealth from from any of these projects and and now uh, moving on to the to the next step this is a picture from uh, from Aarhus this is a picture from uh, the center of Copenhagen a former Carlsberg brewery area transformed into a, a dense city um area. Uh, uh, we also have a tendency that, that developers are, are trying to accommodate new uh, uh, housing concepts, uh, as tiny living houses. Uh, this is a company called Copenhagen Village that actually are sort of coming with a complete package of prefabricated houses, um, put them on sites that are not that attractive. But but uh, in in the larger urban areas uh, where there are uh, scarcity of, of housing projects also for younger people, but but uh, for very small housing uh, units, uh, we also of course still have these very exclusive um, high end development areas in, in in Copenhagen coming up the recent years. So uh, Copenhagen itself is is also expanding uh here is a common climate uh, uh preventing um ex extension of copenhagen you can say into into the water with a completely new island uh, which uh, should prevent uh, future flooding and so on but also 
accommodate uh, uh, several thousand new new housing uh, areas. Uh, so they're going to fill up with new land and create a new coastal um, landscape. Uh, this is a project that, uh, of course, created a huge debate in, in Copenhagen, and it's going on right now uh, on a high political level. So um, basically, now I'll get to what I, I asked to talk about, <laughs> the housing laboratory. Um, it's uh, basically taking its, uh, uh, its it stands on what I've just told. I mean, uh, about that that uh, development has been driven uh, driven uh, the several years of of uh, uh, some few innovative and really nice projects, uh, but the general pro. Uh, 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 pro uh, general uh, building mass of, of housing that has been built has been too generic and, and too bad quality. And and um, th there's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, there's a sort of desperate need to 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 create a push uh, uh, and, and uh, to create a larger uh, inspirational and experimental uh, uh, praxis within many of the mainstream developers. So um, basically you can say that, that Copenhagen is, is, uh, have a, uh, has a lower density of people than it has in, in uh, previous years. Uh, 1900, you have a lot of a lot denser city living together, closer together in, in, in a, a much uh, more varied way than you do today and one of the reasons is that that the way the city is planned so so uh, each of these uh, sectors you can say housing sector school sector park sector and so on are, are planned by an uh, uh, individual uh, municipal uh, uh, silo and and uh, governmental body so and they have their own rules their own settings and so on and demand a lot of space and it's really really diff difficult to to actually uh, uh, merge things and mix them uh, because they have different regulation different agendas and so on so if you want to do that you should start by uh, with the with the machinery around it and 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 reorganize uh, how you regulate this so so when we looked into what is the drivers for 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 change and development that you you can say you have a societal societal change social change that that is uh, transformed into requirements you have cultural development that are tr transformed into to to new dreams and you you can say that uh, social uh, change a lot of that going on a, a new demograph demography uh, climate and so on cultural development uh, we dream of of uh, living in in new ways uh, we have a very very deep family life uh, than before and so on and the same with technical innovation it uh, gives new opportunities but but very little of this was met by the the or is met by the housing sector. So this reverse population pyramid tells everything. It's it's uh, we're getting older uh, and living longer, and there's getting more of us. So the whole the whole life cycle uh, is diff different from from previous. Uh, the homes we need in this process of being born. To, to getting old is, is very uh, different from before. So the housing sector must accommodate housing for, for, for all these ages and create different, uh, uh, diff uh, a new flexibility in it. We are more seniors now in the, for the first time in the world history than there are uh, young children. Um, we live longer. We uh, uh, will be more uh, people that are uh, the age of uh, over 65 that that will demand new ways of housing. Um, we are more people over the age of 80 that would not demand new types of serviced uh, uh, homes. Um, uh, the Danish statistics uh, has defined uh, 37 different kinds of family patterns. Uh, the housings that are being built uh, uh, dominantly is is uh, sort of a norm of of uh, 
uh, a couple with two kids and, and that is not reflecting the society anymore. Um, so uh, as well as new sustainability goals um, and so on. Um, so basically we need to think how to mix our cities differently uh, we we need to to uh, think about uh, our inhabitants and and uh, the goal um, the user end user of of our homes so that was the sort of basis for the the danish art foundation and real dania to to found uh, the danish housing lab uh, the danish art foundation is a part of the cultural government uh, cultural ministry and they are supporting uh, art, uh, the different arts uh, with with the grants and, and initiatives. And uh, they have also an architecture, um, um, an architecture board that, that uh, are, are supporting different projects and, and architecture in, in general. So they wanted uh, to 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 address this uh, issue with the with the with the housing sector that is, has sort of stagnated and not not a lot of innovation on on the broad sense, and and, and they asked the question how can we give incitaments for the for the uh, stakeholders to experiment more, so they partnered up. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> They partnered up with the. Sorry, I have to. <coughs> they partnered up with the Real Dania, which is the world's largest fund, a uh, philanthropic fund for for the built environment in in Denmark. Uh, that support. Uh, uh, projects and programs and, and developments in general within the building and, and uh, industry um, uh, about these projects. Um, and, and the idea was that uh, we should form a housing lab that support both large and systemic scale uh, and small scale. We supported new builds, rebuilds and uh, smaller parts of something bigger. Uh, the key was to get all uh, key actors uh, around the projects together at the table uh, from from the start, which meant the the, the stakeholders, uh, the the investors, and so on, and that we should develop a a program and design in a parallel way, and then share knowledge. So basically, we put out a a, a open um, uh, bid uh, invitation to to the whole sector uh, that where we we asked for a project that could try to give answers on how we can get more for uh, from fewer resources how we can how how can the building industry care for the environment let's offer new forms of housing how can our homes meet our changes lives and demography let's use nature's potential how can the inherent qualities of nature be used to the homes let's redefine the desirable home what is the good home today and how do we make the uh, frugal attractive uh, let's share how can new organizations of space make ground for new communities and types of ownership and let's strengthen the good building traditions how do we build using simplified technical solutions that contribute to the house in general and let's use the local potential. How do we reflect the local condition in our, in our homes? And interesting enough, we got over 60 applications uh, from, from 60 teams, which means investors that had a site, architects, engineers, uh, contractors, everything. Um, so there was a huge market push and interest in this and participated in this. We designed sort of three tracks for, for this housing lab. So one is uh, the seven building projects itself, and and uh, another is um, a, a, yeah. And and what's important with the building project is that they should be case study houses. They should actually try to showcase new solutions, uh, and new housing solutions, uh, uh, and and not only uh, doing research about it. And another thing that they should realize them within the present. 
uh, regulations and, and framework conditions. Um, so what we do is that we give funding for the experiments. The rest of the funding for, for realizing the building should be uh, done by their normal ways of doing that. So, so, so the housing lab gives them money to experiments. That, that's basically it. And then we have a, a track of workshops, housing workshops, we call them, which addresses many of the issues they are, are uh, working with and problems they are working with, where we work together with all the seven uh, the teams as one big, uh, <laughs> you can say, group. Um, we get ex experts in, we do investigations and so on for them. And that has been done here the last one and a half years with very different uh, themes ranging from, from how to build in wood, how to build free prefab, how to build for the community, uh, how, uh, which kind of the regulations and law uh, laws are, are preventing us to doing what we want to do and so on, where we invite all the uh, most important uh, stakeholders to, to discuss and work with us. And then we have, an, <clears throat> have a knowledge track uh, where we uh, gradually uh, publish or, or, or create knowledge from the projects, but also uh, to the projects. <clears throat> Yeah, basically, uh, here we describe it. So we we selected seven teams and seven projects uh, where we had a criteria that they should be spread over the, all over the country. Uh, they should consist of both uh, social housing organizations, both private uh, uh, builders, uh, investors, and also um, self-builders. Uh, in German, you call them Baugruppen but it's, it's uh, civic persons that uh, team up together and, and build their own houses. So, so that was also a criteria which we succeeded. And, and it became seven project types. Um, we have self-builder house, the symbiosis house, inclusion house, vertical common house, collective farmhouse, a generational house and single parent house. That's sort of the main titles of the different projects. Um, the multi-generational uh, house is a, a high story building, uh, building wood and uh, are containing accommodating uh, flats and common areas for uh, students, uh, families and elderly. Um, uh, and and uh, single uh, persons. So so it's it's both programmatically that they they are living in smaller uh, private units that they used to, but they will gain more uh, common areas from it. And they <clears throat> this project is a partnership of of several of the social housing associations. Um, so, so they will use this experience into a lot of the, the, the many thousands housing projects they are going to, to build in the future. And, and they have made sort of an, 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 a step-by-step -step innovative development of how to implement more and more wood and prefab in, the, in their projects. So, so this is, uh, I, I cannot, sh that's the problem with the housing lab uh, state is that that uh, they are not finished drawing and designing it. So, so uh, you will have to wait uh, a year or so to 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 see this. Uh, again, uh, th this development project would affect a lot of of uh, building uh, projects in the future because it's a collaboration with four of the big uh, social housing uh, organizations. Um, collective living uh, on the countryside is a project of a, a group that has taken on uh, to transform a former farm a building uh, to a collective. Um, so basically experimenting with two things. What is the modern uh, collective uh, today uh, living together, several families and several uh, uh, persons in, in the same uh, home, but it most importantly, are testing out how to to uh, transform countryside buildings that uh, former farms 
in areas that, that are in a different regulation zone. So this regulation zone is for farming and not for housing. So how to 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 uh, get around that, how to change the regulations, how to tweak them, how to collaborate with with the uh, neighboring farmers and, and, and so on. So it's basically testing out a new strategy for uh, transforming uh, the countryside, which also are lacking from uh, general development. So this is some of the images for, for, from, from the architects, uh, other similar projects that are working on it. Uh, so at the same time, it sort of accommodates a, a, a Danish dream of, of living in the countryside in, in new ways. Urban self-built is directly inspired from, from the German uh, Baugruppen. Uh, uh, it's actually the attempt to create new um, uh, client uh, builder types, um, organizations. So it's often several uh, persons that, that forms a, a, a self-built group together and then they are the client for their own uh, house. So this is a municipal that has actually developed an internal uh, secretariat and an organization to facilitate this process. So they are helping private persons uh, of how to do this. And one of the largest problems here is of course, to uh, finance uh, these projects uh, because uh, the middle financing, uh, how, how to uh, take the loan that can finance this, the building itself, because when it's built, then it's uh, then it's no problem uh, to finance it. Then it has a value. So, so the municipal has has worked closely together with f financial institutions to develop new formats to this. So this is, has a huge importance for for the whole uh, building scene in Denmark, and and they are testing it this out in in different projects, row houses, uh, multi storage buildings, and and detached houses. So, so, and a concrete site uh, here in Denmark. Um, basically, uh, so so this model also they 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 created a um, a, a go-to organization within the municipal is is uh, they they just written a report of how other municipal can copy that idea. Um, Symbiosis houses is about transformation of uh, existing. Uh, office uh, buildings uh, and and building houses on top and uh, uh, inside and how to to uh, also use common facilities but also uh, how to um, use functions um, there's a big canteen uh, there's a, a for, for the workers uh, offices that uh, will get the uh, crops from the rooftop uh, farming garden and and uh, uh, there's office spaces that the persons live on the roof can use and and so on so they are and they are reusing heat and a, a lot of other things so it's a basically a, a transformation project on how to make uh, buildings that are not longer relevant by functions into to uh, to a new um, symbiosis um, housing collective of the future is uh, a lot, not a lot I can show, but the, it's a large housing project that are incorporating uh, housing units for people with cognitive uh, 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 difficulties, uh, handicaps, and uh, and so on, uh, uh, and and how to do that in an inclusive way. So that that is also addressing a more social side. Um, and what can we share and, and can we create social economical um, benefits uh, and, and companies? Can, uh, um, can uh, the people with the difficulties, for example, become a part of the maintenance team, uh, get a job and so on. So there's also a lot of uh, exchanges between them. Uh, between the social sector here and the housing sector. Interesting enough, it's a collaboration with the pr private developer and a social housing organization. Um, so, and, and the next project is about a very specific development uh, for for single parents. Uh, it's a it's a housing social housing organization that are developing 
a housing scheme where uh, it's affordable for single parents and it, you have the flexibility uh, in the housing structure uh, for the different rhythms that you have if you have kids uh, coming every seven days uh, to your house every weekend or every other week uh, so your your needs are changing and and what can you share with the other single parents so it's sort of the first time in denmark we have that specific user group um, and and demographic uh, in in one building the next project's vertical green courtyards is investigating in, in, in higher building typologies, how to utilize the infrastructure. I mean, the, the, the landings, the, the, the staircases, the entrance and so on, can that become a social space? Uh, there's a lot of reports about the social coherence in, in higher buildings. Um, uh, so, so that is, is sort of testing out new uh, ways of uh, using that infrastructure to, to a social space. So basically what we are doing now is that they, they are working on their project, developing it. Uh, uh, some will uh, start building in, in uh, half a year, I think. Uh, some uh, has not even started drawing yet. Um, but during next year, uh, all of these seven teams will sort of lift uh, a specific agenda uh, uh relating to their projects so they will become the host of an event um in a sort of a, a large-scale national event that are discussing what they are their project are, are trying to showcase so the countryside collective uh will uh, host an event um we have thousands of outdated houses in the countryside let's transform country houses into pioneer homes so, so we, we, we in the housing lab are helping them to become sort of the the hosts and and uh, f for this agenda, and 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 they will invite uh, the 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 profession into a, a debate and and communicate this urban self build. We want to build ourselves and together. Let's give more people the opportunity to become builders or investors or self builders. The symbiosis houses. We have millions of square meters that has only one function. Let's build for synergy and interaction. Vertical courtyards, our square meters for staircases, stairs and landings are secluding. Let's use them to create life between the floors and so on. Housing for single parents, we have different lives. <laughs> Let's build homes for variety, flexibility and community. So it's addressing the, the 37 uh, family uh, forms and life forms uh, I talked about earlier. The wooden house of the generations, we want every life in common. Let's live together across generation and get the best out of each other. And then again, the housing community of the future, we are many who need each other. Let's create inclusive living environments for everyone. Uh, that includes uh, what I uh, just talked about, people with cognitive or social difficulties. So these are the sort of seven agendas that we will pose out uh, during the next year and 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 uh, let the teams be this the, the sort of um, um yeah uh, hosts and and authors of 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 this agenda and this discussion so i think that was um what i had and sorry for going over time here um but i will stop sharing now and uh get back to the screen fantastic well, thanks johannes um and we did run over a bit, but look, it's great just to hear the progress that's been made with this. Um, and I think the invitation to hear again, maybe in a year's time, about how these things are starting to come out of the ground would be great. Now, given it is Friday night um, in Melbourne, um, and um, I mean, I, I thought it was interesting that you talked about a Danish policy, which is about getting closer together. You can't imagine what that means to a Melbourne audience who have the title of the most lockdown city in the world. Um, um, in a post-pandemic context. So with this in mind, let's move to the next session where we have a panel waiting for us and then we will invite the audience to pose some questions in that last panel session. So grab a drink, Johannes, and I'll see you in a second. Um, if you just click on the link, we'll move to the next year.